What's up, people? It's your girl, Adiola. Today, I'm starting out with something we don't normally talk about. Human trafficking is a huge industry making more than $30 billion every year. That is more than how much Google plus Nike and Starbucks combined make in a year. And the sad thing is that this is happening right in our backyard and many of us have no clue. Do you guys know that many of the traffickers, as in the pimps, you get what I'm saying? Many of them are Nigerian ladies living in Italy. Yes, yeah, so they call them madams. They promise young Nigerian girls that they are taking them to Europe for them to come and work or for them to come and babysit for them. And so all these girls, they are excited to go to Europe only for them to get to Europe and find out that they have become sex slaves. They have to work for several years to pay off madame because she sponsored their transportation to Europe. Do you guys know that Nigeria has been described as a major contributor to human trafficking around the world in 2013 when it comes to trafficking people into sex slaves or forced labor? India comes first, followed by China, Pakistan, and Nigeria. Yes, Nigeria is now number four in the whole world according to the Global Slavery Index. Now, after Nigeria comes Ethiopia, Russia, Thailand, Congo, and so on and so forth. The ridiculous thing is how much they have to pay the madame because I'm very sure it doesn't cost like 40,000, 80,000 pounds for somebody to get from Nigeria to Europe. But that's like the amount of money that these girls have to work for before they can be free. Take a look at these videos. It was like celebration. She was cooking, jubilating. Uh, she was now introducing, introducing those two girls to me. You can see this, these are my guests. They just finished paying me. Do you know how much they have in their account? Did you, do you know they have a house in Nigeria? She also learned that for her passage to Europe, she owed the madam more than eighty thousand dollars, sixty-two thousand euros, and her only job prospect was sex work. After a month of working the streets day and night, paying off her debt at about five hundred dollars a week, Amica realized she could never make the money. She realized she had essentially become a slave. Naomi Benjamin lives in Abu Mare, a typical farming village in Edo State, Nigeria. When I get there, she said. This is not, it's not the baby I want to take care of. That is, she all used that one to move me away from Nigeria so that it would be interesting to come to Europe. Naomi says she was finally deported from Italy after two years in jail, but coming home penniless and shamed. I wanted to run away, but I can't. Because you have a lot of friends hanging around, looking at me. So after I finished paying the money. Patients lived in a room packed with 20 girls, all of whom worked day and night. For all five years, she says she was deliriously tired. You see what I'm talking about? And despite the confessions of so many of the girls that have been deported back to Nigeria, do you know that many young girls in Nigeria still want to go abroad by fire by force? Joy Area Mentor listens to the tale, but says she still wants to travel. America because we don't have help here, no, nothing, no work. Because my family is too poor, that's why I want to go to America. If she gets a chance to travel, something bad may happen, she says. But she says something bad, meaning spending her life on the farm will definitely happen if she stays home. Did you guys hear what she said? I mean, even though many of them know the danger of being trafficked, they're still willing to take a chance. I don't blame her though. When 75% of our graduates don't have jobs, why wouldn't people be desperate to leave? Although not having a job is still not an excuse to get yourself into human trafficking. Now, the ridiculous thing is that a lot of parents are aware of what's going on in Italy, yet they want their daughters to go to make some money. In fact, in Edo State, some parents will celebrate when their daughters are going to Italy, even though they know what's going on in Italy. Can you believe that mentality? As you can see, we have a long way to go. Educating the minds of the parents is the first thing that we have to tackle in Nigeria. However, I want to commend some organizations in Nigeria that have been helping the deported prostitutes to get situated. They help them to get a job, to have a normal life. One of them is the Initiative for Youth Awareness of Migration, Immigration, 
prostitution development and reintegration. Now, these people not only help the former prostitutes, but they also educate the society about the dangers of following some madams to Italy. Now, I was so surprised when I found out that this organization hardly gets any support from the government. I mean, I was like, what? Listen to this email that I got from their president, Solomon Okudua. He said, hi, Adiola. Since 2011, we've not received any support from the government. The only area Edo State government assisted us was in training 360 returnees after much pressure. And that was done prior to his election. Now, since July 2012 till now, we've not received any support from the government. I mean, that's really sad. Every year, they do a symposium to educate people about the realities of human trafficking. This year, they're taking the symposium to Italy, but they really need financial help for the symposium to be held this coming December. If you can help in any way, please let him know. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Still speaking on human trafficking, it's not just happening in Nigeria or African countries. Did you guys hear about that woman in Colombia who sold the virginity of her 12 daughters for like $300 each? I'm like, what? 12 beautiful girls. Each one of them, she sold her virginity to some rich men, you know, men in their 40s, in their 50s. She's 45 years old. She has 14 children and she did that for 12 of her daughters. One of the girls said that her mom has been prostituting them since she was like 12. Now at the age of 16, the girl is pregnant for one of her mom's customers and the mother told her to go and abort the baby. Can you believe him? So it was that girl that went to report the matter to the police she was the one that made people know what has been going on in their household for years ah people can be wicked yo, even to their own children eh? and speaking of wickedness i'm sure that you guys heard about that chinese couple that sold their baby girl in order to buy an iphone ah my people stuff are happening the man and woman had been advertising online even before they had the baby that they're willing to sell her for like five thousand pounds so the the whole time that the wife was pregnant, they told everybody, they told all their neighbors that, oh, she had two more. That's why her tummy was getting big. So they delivered the baby inside their house so that no one would know. And that very day of delivery, they sold the baby for 5,000 pounds, 5,000. And as soon as they received the money that same day, do you know that they went online to buy an iPhone and expensive trainers? Shoes, my goodness. They spent the money on iPhone and shoes. Shoes. I said, Kai, ah, you sell your own child for an iPhone and shoes. Ah, for real, they must be colo. It's too much, too much pressure coming from Apple. Eh? Everybody wants to get the new, what is the latest one now? Eh, Kole, which one are we using? We need to upgrade. Eh? Too much temptation, too much pressure. Ah, uh -uh. once you think you have the latest, another one comes out tomorrow. Don't get me wrong, I'm not blaming Apple for releasing new products. God knows I love their products. As per this couple, the case is still in court their argument is that they can't take care of the baby that they don't have enough money to take care of her that that was why they wanted to give her to somebody rich seriously does anybody out there buy that argument i just think that they are cool i'm just keeping it real now, having shared all that with you guys, I find it really hard that some people just don't think that it's a big deal for children to be trafficked or for children to be raped. Because in Kenya, apparently some policemen don't take it serious when someone reports a rape case. I'm talking about a 16-year-old girl called Liz, who was attacked and raped by six men, six grown-up men on one girl. Just, you know, imagine that for a minute. They beat her up and then they raped her and then they left her bleeding. Actually, they didn't just leave her bleeding. When she was bleeding profusely, they dragged her into a ditch. Then dumped her in a 20-foot deep pit, leaving her to die. Four months later, she's partially paralyzed and suffering from incontinence. The once ambitious teenager wanted to run her own company. Now, she doesn't speak to anyone anymore. Liz has already undergone one operation, and there are many more to come. Her mother is angry. Can you imagine how wicked human beings can be? Six men, and none of them had a conscience to say what we're doing is not right. The saddest part of the story is that this girl just lost her grandfather. So she was actually coming from her grandfather's funeral that day. Fortunately for her, she survived because they left her there hoping that she would bleed to death. But they broke her back, and now she's on wheelchair. She also suffered some serious internal injuries from the rape. 
and she's only 16. She has to live with this the rest of her life. Now, what pissed me off the most is the fact that she recognized three of the rapists and when people from her village took this man to the police station, the policeman just asked them to cut grass and then they said that they could go home. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? That means the policemen are encouraging rapists if all the punishment they would get is just to cut grass. But I really love the fact that more than one million Kenyans are protesting this punishment. Anger, shock, and disappointment. Hundreds came out to protest against the police's shockingly lenient treatment of the men accused of gang rape. More than one and a half million people have joined an online petition to press for justice. But not one of the six suspects has been arrested. If these rapists are dealt with, other rapists will be afraid of going after the women. It's so sad that between January and May of this year alone, 338 rape cases were reported to Kenyan policemen. And guess what? 78% of the victims were children. 78%! My people, it's high time for us to fight for the future of our children by not staying silent. Take a minute. Fight for Liz by signing this petition. You don't have to be a Kenyan to fight for her. I signed the petition and I saw that a lot of people from other countries as well are signing this petition. Petition. Please take a minute, sign the petition. Just visit this website. You can find out more information about donating towards her treatment if you're interested. And guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to the Horn of Africa, guess what? Ethiopia now has the largest wind farm in Africa to boost electricity production. Yep, yep, give that up for Ethiopia. Yes, so that's what I'm talking about. You guys know that Ethiopia has been working on diversifying electricity production. They plan to boost their generating capacity from 2,000 megawatts to 10,000 megawatts in the next three to five years. I mean, how wonderful. Not only have they opened the wind farm, but they're also constructing a huge dam that would generate 6,000 megawatts. Meanwhile, um, the giant um, of Africa um, has like 4,000 megawatts for 160 million people. Ah, uh -uh, 160 million. Eh, die, The electricity generated here can light 2 million 60 watt bulbs or supply power to 40,000 cooking stoves. The power generating plants under construction and the ones completed in our country are all sources of renewable and green energy. Ethiopia can now export more power to neighboring African states. Naija! Hey, they sit down there when everybody else is developing their own country. I mean, don't be surprised, my people, if tomorrow you hear say Nigeria is now buying electricity from Ethiopia. I mean, we're already buying from Ghana, from Cameroon. Now, not only is Ethiopia working on generating more electricity, do you guys know that they're now working on building a modern railway? I mean, I saw the video of what they're trying to do and I'm like, Whoa! <laughs> Engineering Kubania, Makatel President, Zoom and Gabo, Baba Kulacho, Masmaru, Beitopia, Yezamanai Babur, Masmar Gambata Hidatus, Tarika Isafra, Yemisat Tobamonu, Bagazio Atanakan, and Nasra Kabalan Nayalut. Naja, for you, for you, being the giant of Africa and all that. Isn't it time for us to take care of business? I mean, look at the train that we are constructing in 2013. 2013, God. I'm not trying to put Nigeria down before you send me that email. I'm just challenging us, okay? If we are buying trains that looks like this in 2013, just tell me, tell me, eh? When are we going to catch up with the rest of the world, eh? By the way, they keep calling the thing light rail, light rail. I've been telling you, it is not light rail. This is locomotive from 1950. This is how a light rail looks like. Eh? Uh -huh. Now we are talking. Eh? Uh -huh. You see? You see? You see? You see? Eh? Uh -huh. <laughs> is a light rail now. <laughs> Each time I read light rail, I, my stomach it does do guru guru. Let's just clear that once and for all. This thing is really way. It is not light rail. I beg. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Now, I think it would not be fair for you guys not to see the drama that happened at Port Harcourt Airport when Arik Airline overbooked a flight to Lagos last week. Take a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Y
Classic. It doesn't get better than that. <laughs> they book too many people than the plane could carry. And then at the end of the day, some of the passengers were stranded, even though they paid. Ah! Thank God that I was not one of the passengers. Ooh! If I were to be one of those passengers that day, ah, 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 hey, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Ah, waiting and talk. Wait, I no go enter this play after I don't pay. For where? Ah, bros, if you don't want trouble, I bet clear the runway. I want to enter. <laughs> now, that was a funny episode, right? But last Monday, something else happened in Abuja this time around, and that was not funny at all. I'm talking about a mid-view plane that was about to land in Abuja, and suddenly, the plane had to take off again, even though it was about to touch down. Guess what? Everybody started panicking. <laughs> Come and see prayers, like real prayers. You know prayers like, Father, Father, right now. Eh? People were speaking in tongues, people that have never been to church, especially because, you know, the plane went into tongues turbulence after taking off again <laughs> before the pilots could explain what was happening apparently air traffic control people had told the pilot that the runway was safe and clear for him to land but as the pilot was about to land he suddenly noticed another plane that was on the runway so he was about to hit that plane when he suddenly took off again into the air now the pilot said that if he had not taken off at that last minute that he would have hit that second plane and everyone in both planes would have died there were 150 people in the plane that was about to land and since they were both close to the airport who knows what would have happened last monday now if that were to have happened in a developed country do you know that by now someone would have been fired because they almost killed more than 150 people but it's niger now <laughs> anything goes and eh? and how can you even fire a traffic control officer when we are still protecting the madame at the top you get what i'm saying after she spent 1.6 million dollars dollars on cars money that was supposed to be used to develop our aviation industry i mean i thought by now that nigerians would have signed a petition that something must be done about this case you know like kenyans did demanding for justice but all i know is that someday now someday nigerians will wake up guess what i'm just keeping it real before I leave today, I like to read some of your emails and the first one is from Mojo. Remember him is the Eritrean guy that I talked about two weeks ago. Guess what? He said that he's getting a lot of support from Africans and a lot of people have been telling him to come to Nigeria. I mean, why not? If he goes to Nigeria, you know, definitely he will be able to work something out. Uh, but I should let you know, he said that his Eritrean passport is still valid, that it has not expired. However, he still cannot go back to Eritrea because he would be forced to partake in the first military service our second email today is from tolani agbola and he says hi adiola you talked about the cancellation of u.s visa lottery uh, regarding nigerians this year in one of your episodes but the question is why are they still advertising it on tv asking people to come and register with certain fee i mean <laughs> i've been hearing that they're advertising on tv for people to come and register for the u.s visa lottery asking them to come and pay 2500 naira please and please my nigerian people don't pay anybody it's a scam i've been saying it in my episodes nigerians have been disqualified for u.s visa lottery this year we do not qualify do not give your money to anybody to apply on your behalf if not next year they will just tell you i'm sorry you didn't win the visa lottery because they already know that nigerians cannot apply this year if it's for another country that's a different story but if they're asking you to come and pay for u.s visa lottery this year please and please do not give your money to anybody our next email is from abdullahi bapa ahmed and he wants me to share with you guys that this year he won the award of the best african student of the year in moscow give it up for the brother i mean people are making us proud in so many countries thank you so much brother for doing good we are so proud of you keep it up our next email is from musumala jekos and she says hi adiola it's very painful to wait for a whole week for your show only to be dashed with a 12 minutes program <laughs> this is very unfair i have addicted my husband to your show and dr damages but you're now disappointing us plus is nigeria so short of news 
that you made your show that snappy <laughs> please we don't want such shorty again well thank you very much my sister for writing <laughs> uh i thought that if the show was short that you guys would be happy that oh this is not long let me watch it quickly and move on to the next thing that's what i thought but apparently a lot of people are not happy that the show was short last week i got a lot of messages <laughs> from people telling me that it's too short uh it's funny because in the past i was getting emails from people telling me that it's too long so that was why i tried to make it short i mean here is an email that i got from you know apps are they saying that it used to be 15 minutes now you're making it 20 minutes it's too long and i'm getting bored anyway i so much appreciate the fact that at least you guys are letting me know what you want what you like so i'm gonna make sure that i meet in the middle so that it's not too long and it's not too short but thank you so much guys for letting me know how you like the show to be structured all right that's all the time that i have for emails today please keep sending your emails to adiola.keepingareal at gmail.com all right y'all it's been real and i'm keeping it real right up in here until next week i'm gonna see y'all later peace out